previously. So I think that's going to conclude this video because uh, there's not really a whole lot else I can do with it. Hello again. In the last video, I was showing my engine and some of its flaws. It was the first iteration. However, I decided to dedicate this whole video to one of its major problems, compression. I spent the last couple weeks running various tests and experiments to develop a piston with high compression. The piston is one of the most important components of any engine, but it's also not very easy to make one either. You see, it needs to be low friction, and it needs to be able to hold a high amount of compression. To do those individually isn't that hard, however to do them together is a different type of challenge. Now we are talking about 3D printing here, which does have its limitations. Let's talk about the first design and why it doesn't really work. Now the first one moves with almost no friction, which is great. However, it doesn't have a lot of compression, if any at all. The next piston I made closely resembles that of one you'd find in a conventional engine. I decided to make one with a piston ring around it that would expand once put inside of a cylinder. By the looks of it, it should work a lot better than my previous design, but we won't know until we truly test it. Before I can test any of the pistons, I'm going to need to borrow some parts from the old engine. To make up for the damages last time, I'm going to quickly throw together a new head here so we can carry on with the piston test. To make a uniform valve seat, I'm heating up screw heads and using them to melt into the valve seats. What I'm going to do to show you how well the piston is sealing, I'm going to assemble the cylinder and the cylinder head, and then we're going to test how much compression each piston has by how much resistance it has. The one we're going to try first, the one that doesn't have any kind of rings on it, and let's see how much compression it has. It doesn't really seem like it has much at all. It doesn't take any amount of force to push it down. Okay, the next one we're going to try is going to be the 3D printed piston ring. Let's try and see how it works. The second one is better but it still isn't perfect. It also has more friction as well. Still, even though the piston ring was better, it still isn't sealing perfectly enough. It's just not compressing enough. I've done a lot of testing, and it just seems to me like there isn't really a 3D printed solution to this. This isn't something you can 3D print and fix. So let's not. You see, I bought a set of these variously sized O-rings here, and what I'm gonna do is use them as piston rings because the nature of the O-ring is that it will naturally stretch out and fit inside of the cylinder and it will conform to any kind of discrepancies across the bore and that's exactly what we're looking for. The piston has a cut out along the side, so an o-ring can be stretched around it, but otherwise it's pretty similar to the one I was just showing. There's not a whole lot else I can talk about it, so let's see how it works. Now you're watching me test the compression without using the head, and you'll see why in a minute. Wow, that is a lot better. With the oil it doesn't actually have a lot of friction. As you can see, it begins acting almost like a spring because of how much it's compressing. When testing it with the head on, you can see that it is actually leaking, but it's not coming from the piston. This means that it's leaking through somewhere in the head. Great. We have a piston with great compression and low friction. But the air is still making its way out, so it's not actually compressing that much. It's not the fault of the piston, but it's actually the fault of the head. And I think what's happening is the air is making its way underneath the valves. So what I'm going to do is use the O-rings that I have to create new valve seats, and then we're going to see if that will solve our problem. I bought this cool little knife a while ago and had been using it ever since. However, I think it's no match for this task, which only my iconic Swiss Army knife can handle. This new head has cutaways underneath where the valve will seat for the o-rings to go. After gluing the rubber o-rings into place, let's give it a try and see how well it will work. So you can see it's still leaking air and it sounds like it is still coming from the head, you can hear it coming through. Now what I'm going to do is put airsoft BBs on top of the o-rings and then see if it still leaks air.
To make sure that the air is escaping through the valves and not elsewhere, I've made this little test device here. The idea is that it's a head that doesn't have any holes in it, so if the air is still escaping, it means that it must be escaping around the edge there where the gasket would seal. And as you can see, that is really, really good. That is very impressive. Holy sh- As you can see, it's absolutely perfect. It even acts like a spring and it draws a ton of vacuum. But my theory is that the air is actually escaping through the plastic itself. You see, if you look into it, you can actually see that there's, li there's these little pores along the seats at the bottom. And I think that's just due to the printing. But this is what inspired me to put glue along the inside to seal these off. So once I seal these off, I think that the air will have no other place to go. It's also worth mentioning, I've actually designed a new head that is made in two different pieces, and this is so it's a lot easier to assemble it because you don't have to worry about having the supports. Now, as you can see, this cylinder housing is absolutely finished with all this testing. Uh, I think that if I actually pull the head off, it won't go back on, so we kind of got one shot to test this out. You can see when I push on the valve as I'm compressing it, all of the air shoots out at once. I can see there is a little bit of a leak, but it isn't actually that bad. It's probably good enough that this could work. Awesome. The compression seems like it's more than adequate for what I need to work. How long is it going to last while it's running? I don't know. But there you have it. A cylinder and piston combination that have perfect compression, exactly what we need. This is probably the most onerous part of this entire project, I think because there's a lot of things that were going wrong with it that I had to just kind of figure out. I hope that the next one will come sooner because it's only focusing on the fuel system. Once I have that working, I guess it's just time to run the engine. I have made some changes to the engine in between the last video and filming this one, but I'll get into those more in the next one, as this one mostly is just focusing on the piston and its compression. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video and for the support I got on the last one. I hope that the next part will come sooner, and I hope to see you there too. Oh yeah, shoutouts to Johnny Hellfire.